In this video, we're going to be looking at 8 gigs of RAM versus 16 versus 32 versus 64 for video editing. First and foremost, RAM stands for Random Access Memory, and if you want to deep dive on all of the intricacies, you can click or tap the screen here. But for the sake of this video, let's keep it simple. Each time you open a program in your computer, it will pull away from the usage of RAM. So if you have 16 gigs of RAM, that's the pool that you have to pull from. Okay, so let's say you open Google Chrome. That's going to use anywhere from 2 to 5 gigs of RAM, depending on how many tabs you have open. From there, you say, okay, let's jump into Premiere Pro, start doing some editing. You're going to use anywhere from 4 to 8 gigs of RAM. And you're like, okay, great. Now I need to pull in some motion graphics. Let's open up After Effects. You're going to be using 3 to 6 gigs of RAM. So right there, you've used almost or all of your 16 gigs of RAM, which is why for video editing, I recommend people starting at a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM. I know I recommend computers with eight gigs of RAM and I think you can get away with it, but for optimal 4K video editing performance, 16 gigs of RAM is a fantastic starting point. I know budget constraints won't allow you sometimes and I fully understand, but that is my recommendation. Now, as you can afford more RAM, an upgrade to 32 gigs is fantastic because it gives you even more of a ceiling for smooth playback and multitasking. Now let's jump into the benchmarks. Export times saw such a small difference between RAM configurations that I'm not going to include those in the benchmarks. It just didn't really make a big difference. So that's why we're going to focus on playback because playback is where RAM sees the greatest effect in the upgrades. Now I will drop in a small caveat because with multitasking, let's say you finish your edit, you click export and you're like, all right, great. I'm going to go do some research on Google or I'm going to go start editing a thumbnail in Photoshop. That's where more RAM would be very efficient because it will allow you to do more multitasking. So you can be editing a thumbnail while exporting a video and that export will not be slowed down by the editing of your thumbnail. Okay, let's jump into playback. Here is a number of computers with different configurations, all based on 16,177 frames in total for the project. And according to this chart, this is how many frames each computer dropped with the different RAM configurations. As you can see, that sweet spot really starts at 16 gigs of RAM. Now keep in mind, I ran these tests with a single channel 8 gig stick for the 8 gig test. So if you have two 4 gig sticks, dual channel, 8 gigs, you might see slightly less drop frames. But as a whole, you're going to see very similar results with 8 gigs of RAM. As you move up to 16, it dramatically improves the drop frame rates. And then as you go up to 32, you can see greater improvements from there. Now, looking at dual versus single channel, you might see a 100 drop frame decrease if you go from single to dual channel for 8 gigs. Um, but this is specifically looking at 32 versus 32. So a single 32 gig stick versus a dual 16 gig sticks equaling 32. And as you can see, it made a little bit of a difference, but not a ton difference. How should you go about purchasing RAM? Should you have it come straight from the factory and have it upgraded and everything ready to go? Or should you purchase it and then upgrade it yourself? Well, let's go talk about kind of the four aspects that make up a RAM configuration. First and foremost, the amount. So 16 versus 32. Then the channel, dual versus single. That means I have two sticks in my computer or I have one. And as a whole, most computers come with two available slots or one slot is permanently mounted into the computer and there's a secondary slot that can be exchanged. Do a little research and it'll tell you what the computer you're considering comes with. Next, we look at the speed. So 2400 megahertz versus 3200 megahertz. And then finally, we look at the latency. And I have these listed out in importance. I think the amount, then the channel, then the speed, then the latency really makes a big difference. Now, most vendors will tell you the top three. You can know amount, channel, and speed. However, the third one is rather difficult to find, and that does make a difference. As much as it is not as big of a difference as the first three, it does make a big difference. And so that is why I would encourage you to buy a laptop with, say, maybe eight gigs of RAM if you're doing, you know, like a high performance gaming laptop, and then go ahead and make the upgrade later yourself. I recommend checking out Team Group. They have great pricing and great latency as well as speeds. And I'll link below my favorite RAM configuration from Team Group. Now they did sponsor this video by providing RAM for these tests, so I'm super grateful for them. But I'm also grateful for like the lifetime warranty they give, as well as the solid speeds and latency that their RAM configurations come with. 
If you want a deeper dive into latency, speed, amount, and dual versus single channel, go ahead and click or tap the screen here, and I'll see you guys in the next video.